Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Ramaphosa has confirmed that a conference will take place in either August or September to try and galvanize the social partners behind a push for higher levels of investment. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss prospects for the President's ambitious investment plans. Hi, Terence. Oh, Securing higher levels of investment is seen as critical for improving growth and employment prospects. Yes, we've come out, or we haven't actually emerged yet, but we've gone through this long period of low growth in South Africa, low and actually job, uh, job losses, uh, not just low unemployment uh, uh, gains, but big job losses over this period, a very difficult time for business. And this is really about r low investor confidence and low levels investment during the uh, latter years of the Z uh, Zuma period, the President Jacob Zuma period, where I think the uh, social partners... Uh, Really, the trust broke down very badly during that period, and uh, business felt there was just too much policy uncertainty in too many areas uh, to be able to put their money behind uh, fixed investment in South Africa. So what we've come through now is, I suppose, a, a, a new political settlement since December, a peaceful transition to a new government, the, the narrative of a new dawn. Um, and we have now the president putting a, a firm target around investment of over a trillion rand over the next five years to try and get this economy uh, back on track of some sort of growth track and hopefully an employment one as well. What are some of the themes that are emerging ahead of the president's summit? Well, I think this issue of policy uncertainty, I think that's being taken seriously by this new administration. Obviously, we're entering an election year, so there's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of rhetoric that might not be so helpful. But I think that because of the lack of policy certainty in a number of key areas, mining is obviously the poster child for this. Uh, we've had really, uh, this is a mining economy, and we've had really a, a lot of uncertainty around the policy in the mining space. But it's not the only one. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, to fix it is not that easy either. So we've got mining, we've got the, the broadband infrastructure, We've got our whole uh, infrastructure rollout. Uh, all of these things, you know, are, are in somewhat um, this in, in fits and starts. So, for instance, in infrastructure, we've seen, you know, uh, we've, we've investment in energy. We've seen a decline in offtake in energy. We've seen a delay in, for instance, the renewable uh, power purchase agreements. Some of that is being fixed on the run, but I think that there needs to be a, f a more coherent approach. Uh, to fixing up the policy gaps. And I think that's what these, these summits are really designed to do. Uh, we've had this period of policy drift over the last few, this, uh, this widening of the gap between the social partners over the last couple of years. And I think setting targets, setting goals, and having a, a time to sit down together and air our, uh, both our views, our differences, but also our aspirations as the different social partners, I think is going to be quite important. And there are signs um, that uh, people are in a prepar preparatory mode for this. I think uh, business, I think, accepts uh, more than it did back when we had the last settlement of the last social compact in around 1994, uh, that things have not gone as, as, uh, as intended. The, there hasn't really been a structural transformation of this economy, which means we continue along this path of deindustrialization continue along a path of pursuing areas either of, um, uh, you know, of where we need different skills <laughs> to what we have and we haven't really invested in skills. So we have this uns many uncertainties on many fronts. And I think also the issue of inequality, I think that wasn't really front and center when we had our discussions in 1994, it was really about uh, you know, moving beyond apartheid. And I think really looking at the inequality as really a growth impediment now, which I think uh, the World Bank has clearly uh, uh, outlined now that in inequality is actually holding back growth in this country and we need to do some things differently. So in trying to bring policy certainty, we're also going to have to deal with some of the areas of policy that, re that will require change or debate or transition. For instance, this whole issue of mining and the whole issue of, of land reform or, or land ownership, these things have to be dealt with and grappled with in a comprehensive way and have uh, either a transitionary roadmap or a total change to policy uh, that brings uh, uh, certainty for 
those that need to put money behind investments in this country. Is a new social compact possible in this environment? Well, it's going to be very, very difficult. You know, we don't only have a very fractured ruling governing party in the African Afri National Congress, and that uh, continual healing post uh, um, NASREC is what something that uh, uh, President Ramaphosa is having to do all the time, and we see it blowing up all over the place in the Northwest, in the Free State, and KwaZulu Natal in particular. So even in house, it's, it's challenging. And then society over the last uh, few years is really fractured in many ways. And I think while business is more accepting uh, of the need for change, and it seems to be somewhat more organized and coherent, and we see that in the form of um, the BUSA coming up with uh, statements around their, their, their roadmap for, for tra racial transformation of the workplace last year, or in the manufacturing se sector, the map to a million, trying to create a million jobs. I think uh, there's been a serious fracturing of the other social partner, that is Labour, where I think there's now a real contest on uh, in that domain, which makes it uh, getting to some sort of a resolution around a, a common vision going to be very challenging. But I think there's, there's a need to end the, the drift, the policy drift that's taken place over a number of years. There's a, there's a willingness to cooperate. Uh, and I think that you have to seize this opportunity now, even though it's not perfect and there's going to be dif it's going to be difficult to try and come up uh, with a new political settlement um, as proposed, in fact, by academics recently that looked at our uh, uh, academics at uh, UJ that looked at the issue of uh, South Africa's deindustrialization, saying that we actually need a, a new political settlement built around reindustrializing this economy. And I think other ideas also need to be uh, discussed, especially this issue around how inequality is holding us back and how we can st start putting in policies in place to try and address that inequality. And especially around, the, um, I suppose, getting young people into employment. That's why I think the signs that we're seeing of, of a greater listening ear from government, for instance, when the YES initiative, which is trying to get paid for work experience around um, for youth, a uh, million youth over the next five years, when it saw an impediment in, in the, the, the new uh, codes, they were able to, uh, black empowerment codes that are, are out for public comment, uh, they were able to approach government in a different way, in a di listening way, and government was able to respond immediately to, to sort of de-link that impediment from people taking up. And that really was around uh, a 2.5% of payroll for a bursary scheme on as a, a precondition for, for you know, getting your, your yes-related BEE credit. And that, wa that was, uh, I think, an important signal that government is far more willing to listen, um, far more willing to engage. But I think a formal process could also be very useful. And I think in August or September, I think we'll see some of that starting to evolve. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.